So first thing first, I'll double click this area to import the data file I exported from Cinema 4D. It's called data.aec. I will see how important it is. So if I double click it, you'll see some missing files that can probably happen, but I really don't care about it. But as you can see, if I added my render inside this file, you'll see that I have these spotlight exported from my render. So I simply added my render into my timeline. And what you'll see also is I have my Octane camera exported to also the lights that I've used to light my scene is also added as you can see so I don't need these lights because I won't be doing anything specifically for it so I'll simply delete it <clears throat> and we're just left with the spotlights that we exported from Cinema 4D so we have our spotlights and also we have our Octane camera that we exported, which is also animated 100% similar to the animated camera we had inside After Effects, uh, sorry, Cinema 4D. And our light perfectly positioned, as you can see, <coughs> inside the same Z space or the same 3D space that it was carefully positioned inside of Cinema 4D. So... I've also imported all the passes, such as the beauty pass, the reflection pass, the indirect reflection pass, and the Z path we created inside of Cinema 4D. So these are my, my main render we exported. I've added my beauty pass on the timeline. So let's see how can we create our volumetric line. So I'll create a solid and I call it, um, let's say, um, volumetric lights. And I'm going to use the effects console plugin by Video Copilot and simply type a plugin. Unfortunately, it doesn't deliver with After Effects. It's a giant plugin called Lux. Now, what Lux does, if I solo it, and if I zoomed in, and as you carefully can see, it adds these volumetric lights. Now, I'm going to press a shortcut called Control-Shift-H, which is going to just hide these spotlight guides from my timeline. So I'm going to press again Control-Shift-H. And as you can see, the Lux plugin inside of After Effects added these volumetric lights and let's say, let's hide these lights for now. Just keeping a single light. So it's referencing the light that we exported from Cinema 4D with the camera. And, and replaced it with a volumetric simple light. So let's explore some of the settings inside of Lux. So I'm going to unsolo the volumetric lights Lux layer that I've made. Press Control Shift H and open the Lux effect from After Effects. There's a tab called Spotlight. And then I'm going to, let's play a little bit, maybe increase the intensity. There's something called Start Reach. So, uh, sorry, Reach, not Start Reach. So if I increase the Reach, as you can see, I'm having more depth to my light. Maybe increase the intensity a little bit. To make it a little bit intense or a little bit focused, let's say, I'm going to turn back on all my lights. I'll simply select all these lights and press AA. And there's something called cone angle. By default, it has like this default keyframe. I'm going to click on this keyframe, so remove it. And as you can see, I have all my cone angles selected. Then I'll slowly decrease the cone angle because as you can see, let's unhide our spotlight. I can increase the cone radius, which on the other hand, increases the, sp the spread of the um, Lux lights or decrease the cone angle. So it results in a, um, let's say, 
um, a more narrow look, as you can see here. Also, I can try to change the color to something bluish. And change the blending mode to screen. So yeah, it's a little bit interesting. And then the start distance, if you can see, it slowly cuts down these concentrated points. Yeah, as you can see here. So what I love to do next is select these lights, hit P for position, remove, of course, the default keyframes that they got imported with, and simply shift them on the x-axis a little bit so they're more aligned with these lights. So yeah, I think it's looking super perfect. And if I scroll through my timeline, you can easily see that they track 100% Perfectly. So yeah, one more time, maybe increase the intensity, increase the start distance, sorry, increase the reach, decrease the reach. You have full creative direction, which saves you a lot of render time. Let's say you want to, again, increase the cone angle, decrease the cone angle and have it to be like very, very strong. And maybe on the other hand, we um, increase the intensity again, so they're more like intense and very sharp. I think I'm liking this look a lot. So yeah, it's looking like really cool now. Volumetric lights for free inside of After Effects <clears throat> without having to worry too much about um, rendering time and noise and all these like um, things that are a little bit, are a little bit painful. Okay, the next step I'll, I love to do is <clears throat> adding the reflection direct pass on top of everything and changing its blending mode to screen. And then, as you can see the difference for compositing a reflection pass on top of everything. But right now it's a little bit too intense, so I'm hitting T for, opa T for opacity and just lowering it down to something like 30%. So this is the before and this is the after. Just a slight increase that slowly makes the render pops a little bit. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the indirect pass, change into screen and carefully decrease the intensity down to 30%. Yeah, so I think right now this is our row render, and this is our composite render. Row render, composite. So yeah, as you can see, we have our volumetric lights and our reflection pass is composited on top of each other. So I wanna hide these lights from my timeline without affecting everything. So I'm simply selecting my lights again, toggling the switches, hitting the shy button and activating it. So right now they don't take too much space from my timeline so I can composite more layer free, composite more layers free. Okay, let's composite some atmospherics. I'm gonna add my Z pass, and then I'm gonna create a solid, just at any default color by now. Hit OK. Then I'm gonna toggle the switches again, and use my track mat switch, and link this blue solid to my Z pass layer then switching to a luma mat so right now this blue solid is taking its transparency or its um and visibility from how this the, the z pass is gonna look like so i'm compositing this blue layer on top of the z layer as you can see right now. So to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm going to select my blue solid, add a linear wipe effect, and change the wipe, ang the wipe angle to 180 degrees, transition it a little bit, then add some feather. And as you can see, we've added a little bit of nice mist into our scene. Okay, so let's push it a little bit further. I'm gonna click on layer, 
solid settings and start messing around with the color. So let's say if I want like pink atmosphere or like red atmosphere. So I can change my colors into red. If I want green atmosphere, of course, you have to be like this color green is not like working with like our red and blue contrast. Red really works well. Blue works well. If I neutralize it a little bit, it works well. So yeah, we're going to go with something a little bit of like a tintish blue. And hit OK. OK. Then we'll go to our Z layer. And add a levels effect. And start, as you can see, messing around with the depth. So if I hide this layer, the Z layer, I can start like, let's say if I want more fog, less fog. Hmm. So yeah, let's turn back everything. So as you can see, we can have more fog, less fog, more atmosphere, less atmosphere. We can also, let's say, decrease it a little bit so it's a little bit more volumetric. Maybe change it a little bit to something like red. Maybe change the blending mode from normal to screen. So yeah, I think it's looking interesting more. So I think these are all our passes composited together. Let's add some color correction. So I'll go to my layer panel and add an adjustment layer. Then I'll add a match bullet looks effect, which is also a plugin by Red Giant. Go into my edit panel. And start scrolling through all my color grade presets. Clicking a nice film a look, as you can see, you can have like a lot of options with filmic looks to elevate your render more. I don't like to go like too fancy, but I like like maybe this look is looking nice. Mm, this one too is looking nice. So maybe I'll compare between this one and this one. I'll go with the contrasty one. I like it more. So yeah, maybe change it, the Z pass. So these are all like creative decisions made on the fly. I think the neutral, like blue, whitish one looks better than the red with the color correction added. So this is before the color correction. This is after the color correction. Okay. So these are looking nice, as you can see. <laughs> Next thing is I add another adjustment layer and use a effect also by Red Giant called uh, Universe, which is really nice. It helps me add some green and chromatic abrasion. So I'll add some chromatic abrasion in grain and of course decrease the chromatic abrasion to something like very subtle and the grain to something let's say 30 or something. So yeah, I think this covers it all. As you can see, this is like a very nice atmospheric cinematic look with all like these volumetric lights, uh, atmospheric fog. Uh, we all cheated it inside of Pose without having to spend like thousands of render hours inside of like Octane to render the volumetrics and have all like these creative decisions. So like, We've managed to take this render from this look to this look in a matter of like minutes with like ease and have like a lot of creative decisions on the fly. So thank you all for, for watching my videos. So if you didn't subscribe or please consider subscribing and we'll try to see you next time. Thank you.